Hello, good evening. Why was India added to the red list of danger warning countries so late? This was the question Labour had for the government today, an urgent question as Health Secretary Matt Hancock admitted the COVID variant that has entered the UK from India has now been found in over 2,300 people. In Bolton and Blackburn with Darwin, it's now the dominant strain which poses a logistical nightmare for a government now expecting to open up the whole country on the roadmap out of lockdown. So what are our choices? To plough on and vaccinate more quickly? To assume the increase in cases will not in fact lead to more serious illness? Or to slow down the next steps until the government knows more? Today marks the first day in five months people are legally allowed to holiday abroad and the first time people are able to socialise indoors, visit theatres, cinemas, museums, gyms and pubs. No one wants to hear this freedom may be short-lived. So what has to happen now? Nick Watt is here with this political conundrum. This is a big day, Nick, and you might have expected to see um, a more visible PM in the midst of all this. What, what is the, the sense of, of where he was or wasn't? I mean, as you say, Emily, it is a... Very... Well, we'll be hearing from two uh, Bolton MPs in a moment. But there is, as ever, confusing and conflicting information regarding the new variants and their power to disrupt the path out of lockdown. Is the one from India actually more contagious? Does that actually mean more people getting ill from it? And critically, is there any proof it is resistant to the vaccination? Here's our health correspondent on what we know and what we still have to find out. Do you think this is actually solving the problem in itself now? Let me just see if, if Mark Logan's experience is um, the same in the North East. Do, do you accept that this hasn't been about reluctant communities at all, Mark? It's just been about difficulty of accessing a sort of centralised programme? Well, the news now, and the US President Joe Biden has told Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu that he backs having a ceasefire in the Israel-Gaza conflict, but he stopped short of openly demanding the truce. Israel's bombing of the Palestinian territory and rocket fire from Palestinian armed groups stretched into a second week. The Israeli PM resisted international efforts to secure an end to the fighting and vowed it would continue with full force. Well, President Biden's facing some pressure from the left of his own party to be more vocal in the condemnation of Israeli force. But the US has blocked a UN Security Council statement calling for de-escalation, cessation of violence and respect for international law. Mark Urban, our diplomatic editor, takes stock. Now, something will have made your heart sing this morning. Perhaps the thought of a foreign holiday for the first time in months. Perhaps a more modest pint in a pub without getting soaked to the skin. Cinemas will reopen. Plays are on our stages. Museums are throwing open their doors. And restaurants are no longer just heating up the pavement. What must it feel like, though, to perform again after a 15-month absence from the stage? In a moment, we'll hear from the poet laureate Simon Armitage and the actor Cyril Neary. First, a look at where we are. I should say. Simon, if I can just um, ask you first of all, how do you write the monologue that will be the first thing that people go and see on the stage for what, nearly 18 months? Yeah, it uh, felt. And the reaction between the audience and, 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 you know, the actor on stage was just stunning. And do you think that, um, Simon, to you, do you think that modern theatre will have to somehow reflect the past year of? of COVID, of, of this, I mean, the, you, we have actually been in this extraordinary communal experience together, which is everyone... I love both your enthusiasm. Thank you both very much for joining us. Thanks. Thank you. Just before we go, I'll take you briefly through um, the front pages uh, tomorrow. The Guardian has surging new variant put lockdown end in jeopardy, um, but a picture of what looks like a first hug between a granddaughter and her her grandmother. Uh, the Times has fears that the spread of variant may end in tears. Um, thousands fly to amber countries as the ban lifts, but uh, we've just heard that, that that actually is legal but not encouraged. And the Mail has now vaccine refused Nick's threaten freedom. Tory MPs warn Boris not delay unlocking on June the 21st over the few who won't have the jab. That is all from us tonight, but I'm back tomorrow. Thanks for joining us. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.